Great. We can probably wait a couple of minutes just while we're admitting a few extra people. Okay. So is the final one tomorrow night? That's right. ECPs, we've got yep. the, last, the last CSI launch is the Early Career Pharmacy CSI, which is tomorrow night. It'll be very exciting. Yes. And go from there. Um, we're, not, so well, we're not expecting a huge crowd. So This one will build in momentum, I think. <laughs> so w welcome, everyone. I, I wanted. To, um, my name is Mark Kinsella. I'm the CEO of the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia. And, and I first just wanted to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the lands on which we're all meeting tonight. Uh, I'm coming from the Ngunnawal uh, country, which is in obviously Canberra, uh, but I know we're all coming from across uh, across Australia, which is fabulous uh, that you all can be here. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I also reflect on um, the work that pharmacists are doing at the moment during the pandemic and particularly uh, pharmacists who are locked down in in uh, in, in uh, Sydney, in uh, Canberra, in Melbourne, uh, and having to deal with uh, supporting the community during this pandemic, I, I pay a huge amount of respect to all the pharmacists who have been working incredibly tire tirelessly to support uh, the community, uh, particularly as we now move into the the strong vaccination phase for pharmacy as being the sort of main main push now to help get the community vaccinated. So tonight, um, we have a very exciting launch of our third community of specialty interests, the Respiratory Care uh, CSI. Uh, and it's my delight to have Cynthia uh, Bosnich here, who is the chair of that uh, committee. I'll introduce Cynthia in a moment, but uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce the concepts of CSI and what we're trying to achieve at PSA um, in launching uh, these really important uh, communities. So Cynthia, I might get you to pop onto the next slide if that's okay. So. Um, P PSA is committed to uh, professional development and we've been very keen to, uh, and particularly recently, improve our uh, CPD and improve our education training development, as well as our advocacy. And I think what um, we've noticed is for a long time is that probably our members have been asking for a vehicle to be able to have two-way conversation with the organisation that represents them with a lot of stakeholders and key decision makers. And so... Uh, the reason we've created these communities of specialty interests is a, is, a, is purely as a vehicle for our members to collaborate on uh, areas of practice within pharmacy, but also for those ideas of collaboration uh, to then form the pillars of advocacy and education and training and clinical guidelines that PSA advocates for. Uh, and so that's, that's really what this is about. It's formalising how we engage with our members to be the very best PSA that represents you uh, in the profession. I might go to the next slide, Cynthia, if that's okay. So essentially it's a member advantage. So, so we've set this up as being a, um, a member benefit. So we've got other forums like the Early Career Pharmacy Facebook page that are, um, are you know, really engaging forums with you know, 11, 12,000 pharmacists on them. Um, but, you know, there's not a lot of um, privacy in that group. It's not a safe space to have, uh, you know, really um, robust conversations around where pharmacy is going. Uh, it's not a, 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 you know, a great environment for PSA to be able to foster and encourage new ideas in the clinical practice areas of pharmacy. And so uh, what we want to do is engage our members and encourage members to be able to have a, a safe space and an environment where you can talk about the challenges in your clinical practice area, but also where you want to advance, uh, led supportingly by a, a proper leadership group uh, and then with the PSA executive and staff and things to support you as well. So I might just go to the structure of the CSIs. So at the moment, we've launched four CSIs, but we will want to bring on other communities of specialty interest as we progress. And you'll see from uh, what we've managed to launch uh, in this week, uh, we've got a community pharmacy CSI. We've got a multidisciplinary care CSI led by Debbie Rigby, uh, which focuses on things like consulting pharmacies, team-based care pharmacy, uh, we've got the respiratory pharmacy, uh, uh, sorry, the respiratory group, and then we've also got the early career pharmacy group. So I think what's really exciting about the respiratory one is it's probably an area that, uh, you know, pharmacists really excel at 
uh, respiratory care for patients and are often major problem solvers for patients uh, as they're in their care journey. Um, and so this is just one of those really interesting uh, clinical practice areas that I think will take off really rapidly in terms of the CSIs. So the CSIs report to me, the CEO of the PSA, we've done that very deliberately. So there is a direct line between all of the activities that happen in the CSI with the organisation that represents and supports you. We still have a board that sets the, the strategic direction of the organisation, and that board is obviously elected by the branch committees uh, in every capital, in every state and territory. Um, but these CSIs are quite deliberately embedded in the activities of the organisation. And you'll notice on the call today also, we've got Chris Campbell, who's the head of policy uh, for PSA. Um, Chris does all of our advocacy, advocacy and policy work, as well as a lot of our, um, you know, advanced practice, advancing practice programs and things. And we've also got Chris White on the call today. Chris White uh, is our dedicated resource to support these CSIs. And so I think um, when the board uh, and Chris Freeman, our national president, was con uh, conceiving this idea of the CSIs, uh, it was really important that PSA invest resources to support our members to engage in it. Um, next slide, thanks, Cynthia. So the CSIs themselves will take three tiers. There's the leadership group, and Cynthia will talk more about the respiratory uh, leadership group um, shortly. We'll have a practice group, which you're all invited to participate in today. Uh, and the practice group are really the committed, uh, engaged, um, uh, you know, members who are, uh, are interested in, um, you know, building on the, the direction of the leadership group to drive forward the agenda of the CSIs. And then we've got the interest group. And it's the interest group I would compare to, like on the Facebook ECP page, which you might all be familiar with, uh, you know, there's a number of members, we've got 11,000 members on that forum, a number who don't really participate, but they're paying attention to the comments, they're looking at the input, they might be looking at our COVID-19 updates as they come through from Peter Guthrie and those sorts of things, but they're not really engaged in the, in the policy debate. And the idea of the interest group is that we want to have uh, members being able to engage in multiple CSIs uh, as, uh, you know, in, in, in various different ways. So you might have a particular really strong leaning towards respiratory care and wanting to advance that part of your practice or advance that part of the, um, the, the practice of pharmacists. But you also might be an early career pharmacist and want to um, listen in to what the early career pharmacy uh, CSI is doing. And so you might be an interest group member of the CSI, uh, of the early career pharmacy CSI, but on, on the practice group of the respiratory one. And that's exactly how we want that to happen. Also, we have the leadership group, um, the, the chairs of the CSI, so Cynthia um, for respiratory, the chairs have been meeting regularly as well. So we want those groups to be cross-pollinating ideas. And how that might work, for example, is, you know, the community pharmacy group might be looking at um, some of the, the ideas for better roles and remuneration in community pharmacy and might think, hey, this is a really, what about we look at some sort of respiratory idea as a future, uh, you know, business idea for, for community pharmacy. And they might say to Cynthia and the leadership group, hey, is this an area that is, might be worthwhile exploring further through the respiratory CSI? So that kind of collaboration, but still sticking within our swimming lanes is really important for uh, how we see the CSIs working. So without further ado, uh, that, that's essentially how we were hoping the CSIs uh, would work. Now, this CSI I am particularly excited about. Uh, when we were setting up the CSIs, we looked at the typical sort of practice areas of pharmacy, you know, um, community pharmacy, uh, you know, early career pharmacy, general practice. Um, we, we definitely want to look at a CSI in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health. Uh, but when, when we met Cynthia, Cynthia has the most amazing passion for respiratory care. And we thought this was just the best opportunity to look at an area that is really important to pharmacists. I've met, uh, since being the CEO of the PSA over the last nearly two years now, I think I've, I've gone into thousands of pharmacies and I'm always blown away at how many pharmacists uh, do really active respiratory care uh, um, consultations for patients, you know, being it from CPAP devices all the way through to good education on how to use puffers. And so I think this CSI is amazing. And Cynthia is exactly the person who I think would be wonderful to lead it. So Pro Professor uh, Cynthia Bosnick is uh, an internationally recognised leader in clinical pharmacy. Uh, she is uh, particularly focused on the respiratory medicines 
um, medicine space. She leads national and international research groups focusing on the use of respiratory medicines in different patient populations. She works across a consortium of healthcare settings with a multiple dimensional and interprofessional approach to understanding and improving health outcomes for patients uh, using respiratory medicine. Uh, she is on the external committee for allergic uh, <laughs> aria. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's all right, we can, we, can, we can start. It's all right, don't worry I'm, about I'm, that. I'm good. Oh, <laughs> and you're the chair of the ARIA group, but please welcome the today, uh, Cynthia. Thank you very much. And I'd like to start by acknowledging and paying respects to the Gadigal people on whose land I reside and to pay respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Um, so thank you very much, Mark. And uh, I also really want to congratulate the PSA Chris Reeman and the board, Mark and his team, um, in particular Chris, who's, who's been helping us with the establishment of the CSIs for this initiative. And I think, um, as Mark said, when, when um, we sort of came together with the idea of respiratory and the, and the PSA was planning the CSIs, it was sort of the stars align, aligning. And so we're all very excited and I'm very excited to be working with the leadership group who, who I'll introduce in a moment. But what I thought I'd do is I'd just start off by really just saying why a respiratory CSI and why it's so important to have one now, given that, as Mark said, so many pharmacists are working in the area already. But I'll start off with a bit of data because that's always important. Um, and I, I guess the bottom line is that still, if we have a look at people who have respiratory um, conditions, so asthma, COPD, allergic rhinitis, if we have a look at uh, patients, whether they're in the community, whether they're coming into the pharmacy, whether they're going to see their GP or whether they're seeing the respiratory physician, you'll see that actually a really low proportion of people actually have good asthma control. And if we look at COPD, we find a similar situation. A majority of people do not have good disease control. In addition to that, we know that these conditions are highly prevalent in the population. And that we know that pharmacists sell approximately 9 million inhalers a year. So that's 9 million or thereabouts opportunities for that patient to engage. We know that based on the figures of people living with the disease, that about 70% of patients remain high risk, high risk of a severe exacerbation or high risk of some other misadventure associated with the poor management or poor status of their disease. But we also know that only about 3% of patients actually receive an intervention. And the intervention that they receive is probably fantastic but it's still only reaching a very, very small proportion of people. I guess the other thing is that we know that pharmacists are delivering services within respiratory care. And that is fantastic for the, the sort of the, the point at which we're starting, because we're actually starting quite advanced in this. But we know that our understanding of respiratory diseases and their management has changed. In particular, it's changed over, say, the last two to five years. And that has some subtle but very important implications for practice. And in particular, it has some wonderful opportunities for pharmacists, new ways of doing things, and also articulating the new and advanced ways in which we can deliver care or approach care. So I don't want to say we're going to... Um, we're going to all of a sudden completely turn things over, but there are some important evolutions that can happen in the type of care that's delivered, whether it's an advanced role, whether it's simply better articulated role or a more fundamental role in the care of that patient. And I think the other thing that we need to do, and uh, I think the whole leadership team really believes in, is that we need to be proactive in determining our narrative around pharmacists and respiratory care. So pharmacists tend to be included in um, committees for the National Asthma Council and all the Lung Foundation. It's not that pharmacists aren't there, but very rarely, or we really don't have a mechanism whereby pharmacists are leading their own narrative. 
And so what are some examples of where we might, where these new guidelines are really impacting on what and how pharmacists could be doing? Well, in terms of the way in which we identify high-risk patients and what we then actually do with them. Sort of this uh, issue of diagnostic re-refinement. Re, uh, the concept of triaging, which pharmacists are in an ideal position to do. Enabling referrals, but also being in a position to receive referrals and better use of electronic data. All of these are things that would be immensely helpful and pharmacists really should have a way of dealing with. So being effective and efficient and sustainable and developing our own narrative across the spectrum of respiratory practice and as that patient cycles through care. Now, this is a slide that um, a couple of, well, the, over the last two nights, uh, Debbie and Faye have shown with regards to the CSIs and how really the CSIs, the uh, pharmacists, the PSA pharmacists, the PSA and policy actually comes together. And as, as you can see, uh, the discussion that comes from pharmacists to the PSA and likewise the support and development collaboration and communication that goes back to pharmacists is incredibly important. And so it's envisaged that that is exactly what would be happening with the um, respiratory CSI. And of course, all of this as a, as a unit, um, as an integrated unit, will feed into policy advocacy practice and change. I guess the thing that we have in respiratory care is that on top of all of that, on top of the way in which pharmacists practice the care they deliver, we have a series of global and local clinical guidelines and they and and what we do regardless of the way in which we practice and the setting that we practice also have to fit into these guidelines so i actually think that um, as mark mentioned earlier this respiratory csi really has a mechanism and a logical fit with in fact all the other CSIs and maybe to start off with, it will kind of be part of that wheel that, that kind of brings the CSIs together in some ways. So I guess what's our sort of uh, mantra or what's our belief about this CSIs? It's really about as the management of respiratory diseases evolves, so should delivery of care across all healthcare providers, but it's time for the role of the pharmacist to evolve in this paradigm. To be, re to be defined and recognised so that other stakeholders recognise pharmacists for the amazing job that they do do in respiratory care and the amazing job that they will continue and to evolve and to do. So the CSI in respiratory care will work towards this and in recognition of the unique role of the pharmacist to improve outcomes for patients with respiratory conditions, but also to service the needs of pharmacists. So what are we aiming to do? Well, establish a peak respiratory pharmacist leadership team. And thank you to the CSI because you've enabled us to bring together some of these uh, leaders um, already. And to have a national network of, of practicing community pharmacists who, have a, who are practicing in respiratory care, as well as those who are interested and those who just want to peripherally hear about what's going on. And once again, the CSI is helping us bring all that together. We also want to define the current status of respiratory management in pharmacy. So what are pharmacists facing at the moment? What would pharmacists, uh, what are pharmacists aiming to do at the moment and where do they see themselves going? And we also want to understand that from the pharmacist's perspective, but we also want to understand that from other stakeholder perspectives. Of course, the patient is one of the key stakeholders here because we may have all the desire in the world to deliver something really amazing and effective and, and, um, and we might get resistance from the patient. And I'm sure that um, many of you have experienced that. So we really need to understand that dynamic. Um, and I should just say that what, what we plan to do, one of our first activities is actually to do a national survey of pharmacists with regards to respiratory care. And based off that, off guidelines and a whole range of other things, we are looking to produce a position paper. And we're hoping to do that, all of that in the, 12, in the first 12 months so that then we can start to develop um, 
a scope of practice, uh, a, re a pharmacy respiratory advocacy strategy, a national pharmacy practitioner development strategy and a framework from which we can develop respiratory tools. So it's really about knowing what pharmacists need, knowing where they want to go, articulating that and providing pharmacists with the tools that they need to get there. With that, we're looking to build capacity uh, with respiratory expertise um, in pharmacy. And as part of that, we are also looking that we will be mentoring pharmacists to leadership roles in respiratory care. Now, being the nature of what it is and the fact that it is focused on uh, a clinical condition for patients and that pharmacists are sort of one part of that, uh, we are also going to need to take a very outward facing approach in our engagement with stakeholders. And these are the key stakeholders and stakeholder groups that we will be engaging with because I'm sure that we'll find it very easy within our own community to get agreement and to get recognition for what we should be doing. But the additional challenge is to make sure that other stakeholders actually uh, agree with us and are willing to embrace what it is that we're doing. And that's going to be a very important part of how we move forward. So our leadership team, um, I uh, listed here, um, I'd just like to take the time to tell you a little bit about each of these individuals. Some of these individuals are people that uh, you already know or have heard of, and some people perhaps you, you may not have come across, but, um, but, but you will. And I've just listed them here in alphabetical order. So we'll start off with um, Sherry Barden. And uh, Sherry is a is, has, uh, has been a pharmacist for many years and in fact has practiced in metropolitan areas in regional and rural pharmacies in New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland. And over the last seven years, Sherry has practiced near her hometown of Bunaloo in the border town of Moama. And Sherry is passionate about respiratory care. She is a qualified asthma educator and has actually participated in several of the community pharmacy respiratory trials. Um, so we're really delighted that uh, we were found by Sherry and that she's, she's joined our team. The next person is Catherine Borg. And um, Catherine is, oops, I need to, sorry. That's Sherry's picture there. Uh, the next person is Catherine Borg. Um, sorry about forgetting to uh, click the button for that photo. Um, Catherine is an early career pharmacist with community and hospital pharmacy experience. She's currently senior clinical pharmacist at Concord Repatriation General Hospital and Concord Centre for Mental Health. And uh, Catherine has experience on the respiratory ward at Concord Hospital and is currently undertaking a Master's of Philosophy at the Wilcock Institute of Medical Research. And she's looking at understanding COPD patients' experiences with their medications. Okay. Dr. Lin Chung uh, from the ACT is a pharmacy owner, pharmacy practitioner and a clinical assistant professor at the University of Canberra. She's, she has a wide range of experience in hospital and community pharmacy, as well as government and education. She's worked for local PHNs and uh, has got a network um, outside of, uh, a really good network outside of pharmacy. Her particular expertise is in patient health networks, and she's published several publications in the area of asthma patients and their views on pharmacists and multidisciplinary care. Uh, the next member of our team is Dr. Bilyana Svetkovsky, um, who is also a pharmacist with community hospital and rural pharmacy practice experience. She's currently a postdoctoral research fellow at the Wilcock Institute of Medical Research, and her area of expertise includes exploring the management of respiratory diseases from the perspective of the patient with a particular focus on optimising primary care engagement. Okay. The next member of our team is Dr. Johnson George, who's a senior lecturer at the Centre for Medicines Use and Safety at Monash University. Uh, Johnson is research leader in public health and health services research, focusing on chronic respiratory conditions. 
uh, in particular asthma and COPD. He particu has particular expertise in developing interdisciplinary models of care involving he various healthcare professionals in, who are key in the management of chronic health conditions. Uh, such collaborative projects uh, that he's been involved in really have focused on preventative and curative approaches. Uh, our next uh, team member is Debbie Rigby. And if, if you don't know Debbie, then you've been living under a rock, I think. But Debbie, it's a great pleasure to have you in our team. And uh, Debbie is an advanced practice pharmacist uh, with postgraduate qualifications in clinical pharmacy, geriatrics and respiratory medicine. She is also chair of one of the other CSIs, the Interdisciplinary Team Care CSI, which was, joined, uh, which was launched last night. Debbie is director of MPS Medicine Wise and past national vice president of the PSA. Um, she, is current, she currently works in general practice, conducts HMRs and provides medicines education to pharmacists nurses, GPs, and other health professionals. And Debbie has received numerous awards, including a PSA Pharmacist of the Year, the inaugural AACP Consultant Pharmacist of the Year, and SHPA Clinical Pharmacy Award. Okay, our next team member is Professor Bandana Saini. And Bandana is also an experienced community pharmacist and academic. Um, Bandana is a professor of pharmacy practice at the University of Sydney Pharmacy School and her training in business administration and implementation science complements and is evidence of her research which has led to the implementation and evaluation of several successful pharmacy based models involving screening, patient self management and clinical audits and pharmacovigilance. And that's across asthma, COPD, allergic rhinitis, and sleep disorders in primary care. Uh, Vandana is chair of the Medicines Committee of the Australasian Sleep Association, the ASA, a member of the ASA's clinical committee, as well as a pharmacist advisory group on the National Asthma Council and primary care advisory committee, Lung Health Foundation. And I think, Debbie, you're on at least one of these as well. And I, I'm sorry, I don't think I added, added that one in. So we're very pleased that Bandana is also on our team and Bandana and I have been colleagues for many years. So it's, it's gonna be really fun. And um, finally, um, we have Dr. Kim Watkins. So Kim is a practicing pharmacist, a pharmacy owner and a lecturer at Curtin University. She's led research looking at experience of asthma patients in community pharmacy. And Kim serves on the pharmacist advisory group of the NAC as well, and is passionate about demonstrating the economic viability and sustainability of professional practice. And um, I think it's really important to note also that Kim is the first author of research that was conducted in Australia a few years ago, which looked at patients' experiences um, in coming into the pharmacy when asking for a reliever medication. So uh, I'm really delighted to be working with you guys and really excited about what it is that we're going to do. And if we look at this team, we've got, we, I think we've got it covered. We've got uh, six practitioners across different healthcare settings. We've got educators, we've got an asthma, I think we've actually got two asthma educators. Uh, we've got people with a research background as well as policy and advocacy. So how do we, envisage that this will actually play out amongst the different levels of the leadership group. Well, um, the lead I, I was, across the CS, CSI, well, I guess the leadership group will be uh, rolling their sleeves up to drive, coordinate and moderate the activities and really um, to deliver on these sort of KPIs, I guess, that we've set ourselves. And then, of course, we'll be uh, liaising and looking to the practice group to, in, to engage in dialogue, provide us with feedback, support dissemination throughout the network, and, and continue to, to be active in what they're doing in respiratory and perhaps test our strategies um, and also take up any opportunities that we, that we look forward to providing uh, within the leadership group. Um, we envisage that the interest group will probably be uh, a group more where we are disseminating out information. And then we, we think that 
on a monthly basis, we will plan to send out some information about the latest news in respiratory medicine. Um, so I think the, the last few slides are really about joining up to the CSI group. And if you've attended the last two evenings, you will see that um, we there are four leadership uh, groups and you can, sorry, four CSI groups, and you can join up to as many and or all of them as you like. Um, and if you go through the PSA website, you'll find a bit of a description about those. And from there, there's a, a link to register. And we should just let you know that when you do go to register, um, you will be asked which group, but then you'll also be asked to uh, provide a bit more information about you and your interests. And this will help uh, the PSA in future developments. And then actually you're ready to go and uh, We'll, we'll be able to communicate with you on the forum. Um, there's also a support um, mechanism. So if you do need help, uh, it's available for you in terms of uh, getting onto the, onto the forum and how to use it. And um, Chris White is, is, our, is our guy. So he's ready to help and, and really very helpful in providing uh, support and advice. And um, I guess I just, in terms of the uh, CSI, I thought uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Uh, any member of the leadership group is happy to answer any questions. I know that there are a few more slides about coming up events. So I don't know whether, um, Mark, you'd like to, um, whether you would like to do those, do uh, notify people of those events or whether you'd like us to take some questions now, whatever you like, I think. I we're, think, we're flexible. I think probably everyone on here has probably caught most of the announcements from the last two CSIs. Um, the only two I was going to call out is don't, don't forget next week is World Pharmacist Week, uh, which is fantastic. We've got a whole series of announcements happening over the week. Uh, we really want to celebrate pharmacists and all the work you've been doing, particularly during the pandemic. Um, the week culminates, well, it doesn't culminate, but but um, on the Friday, the 24th, we have our PSA Excellence Awards, uh, which is in the evening, and it's a live stream YouTube uh, event. So please do come along to that. And uh, also um, then on the Saturday, we've got some more social media events. Uh, so that's probably all I've got, Cynthia. Other than tonight, if you want to come along to the rapid antigen testing uh, of um, uh, webinar, it's on very shortly in 15 minutes. So you're welcome to join. There's still a couple of spots left, uh, but it should be a good session too. Uh, over to you, Cynthia, for questions from the group. Someone's got to have a question. Am, am, I, am I okay to yeah. ask a question? Thank you of so course. much. Of course. I'm really exciting, Cynthia, of what you got planned. Uh, I, I like the full 12 months and, um, I'm going to give you the opportunity as chair. I'd love to hear from uh, each of the leadership group that, that are on what do they want to achieve out of this? What are they, where, if, if there was one thing, if they were to say that the CSI has been successful, um, how they've helped to move the profession. Um, uh, but I'll let you as, as, the, as the chair to choose who you're going to. Oh, okay. To I'm going to go <laughs> with Bandana first. <laughs> what would I like to achieve? I think it would be great to see after about 20, more than 20 years of research work on looking at what pharmacists can do for asthma, for COPD, to have some, you know, a sense of standard practice, um, some guidelines um, that, that I would love to see rolled out so that everybody, all pharmacists are working towards that. And some can then choose to have a specialist level or advanced care practice level uh, in respiratory. So I'd like to see some implementation of all the research um, that uh, my colleagues and I have done uh, cumulatively over the last few decades. Thanks, Vandana. I, I think we'll go to uh, Johnson and then we'll go to Debbie. So I, I, it's unfair to just sort of drop people, but Johnson, you're next. Hi, everybody. Um, it's very exciting to be part of this group and I really look forward to working with you all. Uh, in achieving some big goals that um, Cynthia has already outlined. I sit on the COPDX guidelines committee and it's very important that we work with other health professionals uh, 
GPs, respiratory specialists, uh, physiotherapists, and I think pharmacy is the first place that people come with their respiratory problems. So if we can um, play a major role in terms of improving the diagnosis of the condition, I think that would be a good start because a lot of times people just buy all the counter stuff and never you know, go beyond that. So I think improving the diagnosis, case finding approaches, that's where I would like to start. Fantastic, thank you, Johnson. Debbie. Uh, I think I have to say that I would like pharmacists, um, no matter where you work, uh, to be both confident and competent to um, teach patients how to use their inhalers correctly. There's a lot of work that can be done. There's a lot of resources already available, the videos um, by the different organisations. But we've got to start the conversation in a different way, and I think that's what some of Kim's research um, did many, many years ago. Uh, that, and we need to do it, and we need to do it well and routinely at every opportunity, because if patients don't take it, so improving adherence, uh, and don't use their inhalers properly, they're not going to get the outcomes they should. So, I think there's a lot of work uh, from education, skills development. Um, articulating to other uh, organisations about the role of a pharmacist, as I said, no matter where you work. Thanks, Debbie. I think, Kim, let's go to you next. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, I guess what everyone said it really resonates with me already, so I feel like I'm on the, the same bandwagon as everyone else, but I'm very passionate about implementation science. I think we've shown our potential in pharmacy to do great things, but I think there are definitely barriers that stop us from applying our skills in practice. So I'm really keen that we take that next step and work out how to implement good practice. And yeah, I think that there are some real barriers and if we can really understand them and overcome them and work with other health professionals to find our role and niche in this area, that's, that would be really special for me. Thanks, Kim. So I think we'll go to Biljana next, uh, and then we'll do Catherine and then Cherie. Thanks, Cynthia. I wholeheartedly agree with everyone and their sentiment this evening, but what I'm really excited about is this being a platform for us to hear from community pharmacists that are in practice, because we're often the more vocal people who are called upon um, to give our advice and um, to give our opinion, but really the people on the ground are the ones that are experiencing the issues day to day. And I'm really looking forward to hearing about it on this platform. So I think it's a wonderful, wonderful initiative. Thanks, Biliana. Catherine? Yeah, really well said, Biliana. I, I just wanted to mention, I think as pharmacists, we have so much knowledge and we have the ability to to get in touch with patients, whether it be in community or hospital, and we should really just take advantage of the position that we have and really expand. Um, and I think, like everyone said, there's room to grow and I think we can really make quite a difference. Thanks, Catherine. And Cherie? We just, just, just turn, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. I agree with everyone. And from an asthma educator and retail pharmacist perspective, also having been involved with the Woolcock with two trials, I would absolutely love the um, respiratory meds checks to be um, the way moving ahead, like diabetes meds checks are recognised and meds checks themselves, but actually a respiratory meds checks would be really wonderful within retail pharmacy. Thank you very much. So they're pretty awesome, aren't they? <laughs> Amazing. Any other questions or thoughts? Anyone want to start sharing their ideas with us? I had to say, I just walked away from there, Cynthia, with the idea of respiratory meds checks. We are literally having a conversation with the department at the moment over professional programs and what to do uh, with the medicines reviews programs. Uh, this is exactly why we need these sorts of groups, right? Like, you know, we, we, we get asked for um, advice on these things to have a group that we can come and talk to you about what 
what what really needs to happen is fantastic. That's why this group is just so important. Wonderful. Great. Well, I think it's just up onward and upward then. I, yep. I think. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions in the chat box? No. Fantastic. Well, we could probably wrap it up there just so everyone can grab a grab a bite to eat before we, we get into the rapid antigen testing uh, webinar in 15 minutes. Um, but I'd particularly like to thank you tonight, Cynthia. You have done an amazing job uh, driving this uh, CSI forward. As I said, this is this is one of the CSIs that I think has has one of those things in my gut that I know will actually change uh, both what we do in, in respiratory uh, science in Australia, but also in clinical practice. And, and when those two things meet, wow, that's where you really change uh, change the lives of our patients. And that's, and that's really vital. Um, I, I'm very genuine that this is something that PSA wants to invest in, wants to support. We do need to hear more from our members. We do, do need to build uh, closer networks and, and relationships with our members. Um, so thank you very much for your support of PSA. Um, we would be nothing without our members. We would be um, uh, not able to do the work that we do. Uh, we, we also are very grateful for all the work that you're doing in the community and supporting Australian patients. Um, if there's any ideas that you've got that can help support uh, PSA in, uh, in, in doing better, or you've got ideas for uh, other CSIs that uh, emerge over time, please let us know. Um, we would love to hear your ideas as well. So thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And, and thank you to the whole leadership group uh, for all your work and all your exciting work into the future on this CSI. Great. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye.